broadcasting from the Blanchestan Centre. This is Phoenix FM. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. According to the Nerd Index, you should be upside down in a junior high toilet around the clock. This is Sparta! <laughs> All your base are blown to us. The balls are inert. And now it begins. Hello and welcome to Nerd to Know Media on 92.5 FM. My name is Keanu Calvin and we are joined by some fantastic guests from Shurikon. Guys, would you like to introduce us? All right, all right, all right! Shurikon, woo! Hey there, people. My name is Mark K. Reedy. I am the director of Shurikon this year, and joining me are my fantastic, amazing Tastics associates. Hi there, I am Finn Bird, the volunteer manager for Shurikon. And hello, I'm Maeve Reed. I'm the public relations officer for Shurikon. Lovely. I wasn't sure if you were all going to do a big howling entrance because I kind of dug that. <laughs> uh, that's just my thing now. It's like I watched an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's called Charlie's Charlie Work. And there's just a scene where one of the characters starts going, all right, all right, all right. Really just rattling me throughout the episode. Like, hey. That's a good catchphrase. So every con I've gone to now, when I've had to like get up to do the whole, uh, oh yeah, these cons when I was talking about themselves and introduce themselves, have just started with, oh, all right, all right, all right, and it's it's catching on. It's catching on. So it's, it's a niche. It's my niche, you know. It's memorable. I I think Matthew McConaughey may have stolen it. I check with him though. See, that's it's it's <laughs> everybody says it's Matthew McConaughey. It's not. I like, I barely watch anything with him in it it's it's just always sunny in philadelphia i love the show <laughs> oh yeah of course it makes you feel wonderful and terrible at the same time and that's that's sure it's wonderful and terrible <laughs> minus the terrible of course yeah. what it's a segue terrible. well then percent wonderful on that positive note i have been dying to ask you a few questions about Shurikon. but first of all as the director how do you kind of put together a convention? Do you have a plan or like, how did you learn how to put together your first one? So as the director, I, this is my first year running as director. Um, and my first year as part of Shurcon was last year where I ran as general member. Um, last year, I suppose uh, us being a voluntary convention and being run by students in college, a lot of the time people get caught up in studies, which is fine because study is a priority. So I, I'm i studying culinary arts. I'm in second year. I'm like, ah, easy stuff. You know what? I'd rather focus my attention to working on a convention. And that's what I did. I did social media. I did PRO. I helped run the world record attempt for the largest Kamehameha. Um, I did a lot wow. Of I I wanna, lot of sorry, before you go anymore, I want to hear about the world's biggest Kamehameha. Uh, unfortunately, the world's biggest Kamehameha goes to San Diego Comic Con only because we established it, mind you, only because we established it. Um, we had the record to break because it was not set. The minimum you needed was 300. We had 270. We were 30 people off breaking and establishing a world record, which was unfortunate. But hey, everybody had fun. We got some great footage out of it. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Yeah, um, it's only at over 9,000. You know? <laughs> if only it was over 9,000 and you know what I think San Diego definitely got over 9,000 <laughs> they had their they had their scanners on Vegeta <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know what a Kamehameha this is Dragon Ball Z right yes Correct. it is so the basis of it is you get your hands you cuff them you put them in towards your waist you go Kamehameha extend your hands outwards Ah! <laughs> it was beautiful trying to get 270 people to do that. Some guys started dabbing halfway through. I was like, oh, gosh, no. 
Let's try this again. <laughs> if you have photos or video or anything, I would love to see them. We'd love to share them on the page. If anything like that. I'm sure we can find it somewhere. That requires a lot of digging, but it is definitely somewhere. Oh, they're most definitely on our Facebook page at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you can go back to last year's event. We've got a lot of pictures up there. Oh, many. <laughs> and I want to get on to you, Finbar, actually. You are the volunteers manager. So would you yes. get a lot of volunteers? Is it a tough job to do? It's, uh, it, it can be challenging, though uh, the convention scene in Ireland in general has a lot of people that get really, really invested in these sorts of events. So finding people is never the issue. <laughs> uh, we're always inundated with, with, with applications. And it's just a matter of, 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 of course, uh, getting everyone together, doing a little bit of training. And, you know, there's a lot of people there that are willing to help us out. Okay. Would you have to be like the bad cop then? Or is it like kind of smooth sailing? Yeah, <laughs> mostly suits smooth sailing. Uh, I haven't had to... Uh, we, we haven't needed a, a good cop, bad cop duo in quite oh, some time. See, he, he says that as he like tightens his whip. You know, it's like, <laughs> yes, I'm a, I'm a smooth sailing good cop all the way. <laughs> no, Finbar is fantastic. I don't know where I'd be without him, but uh, go on, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Um, the, the only the only whips uh, allowed at Shuriken are, are prop whips for for cosplay. And also, <laughs> no real whips. And also, uh, also no real ice cream guarantee. for those tasty tasty whipped McFlurries that I owe you guys. <laughs> oh, is that is that how you pay the staff? Uh, it's a weird joke. I was one of the meetings. Let's say I was stressed. I wanted people to be enthusiastic, get on board. I'm like, guys, if you just do the work, I will buy all of you McDonald's. And now it's just an ongoing joke. Mark owes committee McDonald's ventures. <laughs> I'm like, oh, gosh, yes. Okay, cool, fine. So, well, I've heard of, I work in theater. I've heard of worse ways to get paid, certainly. <laughs> and uh, what about, speaking of theater, actually, what about yourself, Maeve? Uh, tell us about your responsibilities and what you kind of do for Shurikon. Um, Well, my main job is just uh, getting in contact with people and getting um, sponsors for Shurikon. So um, we've got, the big one this year is Red Bull coming to sponsor us again with beverages. We'll be drinking continuously throughout both the live stream and Shurikon itself and handing out to guests at the event. Uh, oh my god. So like, you're going to have like completely wired cosplayers on Red Bull? Yeah. Oh, that's that's I, mean, I mean, I'm speaking as one. I'm hyper. No, I, we'd be hyper enough as it is <laughs> without the encouragement, you know? You know, it's kind of a staple at this point from what I've seen of Shurikon and I've volunteered it for the past few years. <laughs> Yeah, sure which, more actually, like Red Bullicon. Bullicon? Red Bullicon. That's <laughs> alter ego, you know. We just <laughs> we just hype up all the we just like fuel all the attendees on caffeine and they just have a good time because well they're yips on caffeine and that's it. We just yeah. get them coming back like Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll go for caffeine. Easily. Oh, caffeine yeah, like, <laughs> Gamer that fuel, you know. Yeah, exactly. And tell you what, before we get into, because I know you've got a lot of things you want to tell us about this upcoming con. Do you have any strange stories about being involved with the con or anyone attending or anything like that? I feel if anybody has any funky stories, it's potentially Finbar because he is, without question, the longest running out of the current committee. Like He's been there since the get-go. I, I, have, I have been involved all, all four years. So the, the one drawback from... The volunteer manager management position is that while I, I get to work so closely with with the volunteers, I, I rarely get to see much of the con itself. <laughs> I, my, my my attention tends to be elsewhere. Uh, <laughs> ah, that's a terrible shame. But you're the one who like keeps it running efficiently. Then, by the sounds of it, help. Obviously, it's a it's a team effort. But uh, uh, he says that as he closes his eyes, like oh, obviously, team effort. <laughs> Couldn't do this without other people. Losers. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me something, guys. I've got a lot of questions about Shurikon, but do you guys attend other conventions regularly? Are you guys cosplayers? Anything like that? Um, a little bit. We definitely attend a good few 
every year. Like we go do the rounds to different cons, like Akuma Con and Kazoku Con, and yeah. Our, our latest one there was JCon. Um, now, Finbar was actually running volunteers as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah. Con I think so one of those volunteers. <laughs> um, so, uh, Maze, Maze was actually, yeah, one of the volunteers. So, like, out of the three of us, I was there representing Shurikon. And I would have, without question, actually, no, at the closing ceremony, I came in another funny story for another time, my extra, extra, extra large shirt. But during the convention, I was dressed as old Joseph because I had a, a JoJo Bizarre Game Show panel. I'm like, oh. no, I'm getting into cosplay. I'm wearing this for the day. I'm going to do a rocking panel. And I did a rocking panel, and I did a lot of advertising for Shurikon, and it was a long, long day trying to be serious in cosplay. Like, I had uh, one of the vendors try to do a, a quick business meeting with me. And I came up being like, in this really ludicrous looking cosplay, being like, hello, my name is Mark Reedy. I am the uh, convention director of Shirt How can I help you today? And uh, yeah, that just felt really humiliating and stupid. There's but, nothing to be humiliated about, though. Because I've run panels in, I was at that JCon doing a panel as well. And uh, like, it's, you're in a costume and you're painted blue or you're wearing a wig or something like that. And then you have to like slip into business mode. And it's like yeah, disconcerting, like, you know? But being in cosplay is great. And I don't feel any humiliation in cosplay. It's just once you go into business mode, you're like, I must look absolutely ridiculous right now. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to look ridiculous at a convention like, though, in fairness. That's true, that's true. I, I think everyone looks wonderful, if anything, you know? Like, I suppose how colorful it is is somewhat ridiculous, but overall, I love cosplays. I go around fangirling over every single person dressed up. I'm like, oh my god, I love your cosplay, I love your series. Oh, I want to take photos of somebody. <laughs> okay, guys, well, I mean, uh, I've got a lot more questions about your kind of cosplaying and that kind of stuff, but... Is there anything special you want to tell us about Shurikon? In fact, for anyone listening on the radio or on Spotify at home, uh, give us a quick lift pitch about why, apart from the Red Bull, people should go to Shurikon this February. This February? Oh, yeah. I suppose the... Yeah, the big announcement that we just we just made earlier today is our, and touching off what we were just talking about, our uh, big international cosplay guest of the year. Um, who is the the wonderful? I, I believe she's a, a Dutch person. creative Willow. Creative, creative Willow. Willow. She's Netherlands. Is that Dutch? Yeah. Yes. Oh God! I need, I need to learn a bit more geography. I'm, <laughs> I, I'll be honest, and this is a very embarrassing story. I thought Netherlands was a collective term for all the kind of like Nordic countries, so like Sweden, Denmark. I'm like, I thought they were the Netherlands. And I only found out like about a month ago that that. Netherlands is a separate country. I'm like, oh god, you're joking me. Oh no. Oh no. Um, not so were you like me. you were like Joey and friends who thought like the Netherlands was like this place where Peter Pan and Tinkerbell live? Basically, yeah. I was like Netherlands, yeah, yeah. All the all the Nordic countries. Cool, cool, cool. And then somebody I was like, Mark, are are you are you stupid? No, it's just a <laughs> trip. Like, wait, wait, what? So <laughs> again, our cause Player who I'm super excited for. I mean, hype for because of the cosplay she's done. I love them. But yeah, so this is Willow Netherlands. Creative, the one who like she's dressed up as, Mew as Mewtwo on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Yes, yes, that oh, is yes. her. Mad, exactly. I follow her. That's crazy. You know, her her big cosplays are so Mewtwo. wonderfully uh, created. Her 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 Samus, uh, so as good. I said, the, her Mewtwo. Oh, stop! Is, stop! The other one, it was from uh, Metabots. I can't remember the name of the exact character. I've never watched the series, but it was really cool. Really big, uh, not a mecha, but like a, uh, a boss build. It is fantastic. The amount of work that must have gone into that. Like, whoa. Uh, but yes, it's from the series Metabots. I can't remember the name off the top of my mind. Well, but still, honestly, so I think her, like, getting her as a guest is quite a coup. That's very impressive, guys. Oh, yeah, oh no, we are, she's, we are. she's quite big. Um, what, and we are very excited yeah, to have her really at, over with us. Oh, looking forward to it. She looks like a real, like, diehard con person as well. And that's what we want at Shuricon. It's, yes, like, obviously popularity is great because guests want to see, or not guests, uh, attendees want to see 
popular guests, but for us, and even from last year with our guest, Misty Carnexia, I think it's much better to have a guest who's enthusiastic about the invention, who wants to meet people and wants to engage. That's so much better than somebody with like 10 million subscribers that doesn't care, you know, and that's, that's what it's about. It's, it's a love of conventions. That's what Shuricon is, for me anyway. Oh, very well said. And um, I'm guessing you probably basically flagged a costume competition, but like, what what kind of events or like can we expect from attending Shuricon? So yeah, like you said yourself, costume competition or cosplay competition, that's a big one. Um, for anybody listening, we have definitely got a special announcement about the cosplay competition that will be coming in the next few weeks, hopefully, because we are still organizing it, but it's going to be different. It's going to be cool. It's going to be a wacky. So yeah, <laughs> please do keep and stay tuned. Um, I'll, I'll definitely have uh, our hosts here uh, at Nerd to Know say it on one of the podcasts one of the days because it's just, it's, it's not cool. I think it's not cool anyway. Uh, my fellow teammates know about it. Would you agree that it's not cool? Oh, absolutely, um. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we've got a lot of fun things planned for cosplay, like this particular thing that is a secret for now, but also, you know, trash cosplay and the skits that we're hoping to do, those will be fun too. Just... Okay, I'm getting excited now. Uh, and like, what yeah, kind no. of events do you usually like? Uh, I'm guessing you have like a market stall and all that kind of stuff. Like, you get like, what kind of stuff have you done in previous years? So I yes. suppose. Like, <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> what have you done in previous years? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Um, in previous years, like we've. Uh, sure, cons that kind of we, we like to be niche. We like to do something that's just a little bit outside the box. Let's try something different. Um, last year, the big niche was the world record attempt. Beforehand, I wasn't part of it, so it was I think the Pokemon League tournaments. Finbar could yes, probably tell you yes. a bit more about those. Uh, yes, two Pokemon years ago, League we, we, yes, <laughs> we uh, we attempted a a, po a Pokemon League where we had eight. Uh, gym leaders stationed around around the uh, the venue with 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 specific Pokemon te teams under I believe it was uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon had just come out. Mm. That sounds about right. Yeah. So yeah, it was with Sun and Moon teams. So yeah, people with their with their DSs on the day could come up and challenge the Pokemon leaders and and gather the eight, eight badges. Oh, that sounds like a fantastic idea. And you really kind of predated Pokemon Go in that regard. I think it was a little bit after Pokemon Go, after, unfortunately. But, uh, Pokemon Go, was, yeah, yeah. I would it was, it was, it was a, a, a very fun idea. Yeah, okay. Well, then I am hyped. I'm very intrigued by this mystery. <laughs> but uh, let's say, because we're talking about events... For people who are applying to be involved, where can they find and what kind of things are you guys looking for then? So currently we have our volunteer applications open, which I, as I mentioned, that's what my, my domain. But we also have um, trader applications and, and panel applications open at the minute as well. Mm. So anyone that wants to uh, come to the event and, and give a talk or a demonstration, uh, 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 links to all these applications can be found on our website. Uh, website. I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, uh, it's a website. A, <laughs> going out at five o'clock on the radio. That was. <laughs> ooh, that was a, a so, bad slip. He's so frustrated from all the all the volunteers that's managing like the the web the web. <laughs> <laughs> on our website. Sure, come back. There we go. <laughs> Congratulations, you speak basic English. <laughs> Doing great, honey. We yeah, but we are very excited to have all of our applications open. Like you said, it's like with trader and volunteers, they fill kind of naturally, you know, because you know, for traders, it's business. For volunteers, it's I don't know what it is. Struggling, it's, it's an experience. It's a bit of fun. Free T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but for panel applications, there's never any real issues finding them. But 
if you talk to people, and I've talked with a few friends myself, half the time people don't want to apply for a panel because they're too nervous about their idea or they're too afraid that it won't work. I think that's crazy. You know, it's if you've got a great idea for a panel, do it. You know, the first time I've ever hosted a panel was at JCon last year. I was like, you know what, I'm going to do a, a JoJo game show. And I'm just going to make it weird, wacky. It's not going to be well planned. It's just going to be a massive meme. And it went down great. People had a fun time. I was sweating. Like, literally, if you look at my armpits, sweat. I was so nervous. But people had fun. And I know all of the wonderful con attendees. They could do fantastic doing the panels. And I want to see those things. And, like, the applications are coming in steady. And we're really excited looking through them. But, like, if you've got ideas, don't be afraid. Spit them out. I want to see weird and wonderful at short con. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, uh, I think we will take a quick break. But uh, guys, thank you very much. We will be back in five. This is the Shurikon panel on the Nerds Know You panel, and we'll be back with you in five. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Nerds No Media on Phoenix 92.5 FM. We are joined by the fabulous Shurikon organizers. And before the break, we were getting a taste of kind of what panels you're looking for and what panels you've done before. So, uh, Mark, I believe you're about to tell us a story about a panel you did before. So, panel that I've personally done before was a JoJo's Bizarre game show panel. Um, again, Big meme. Big meme. <laughs> if anybody, for any of you who's watched JoJo, I'm like, I think that's really hot at the moment because part five just finished. It doesn't make sense. Uh, kill me if you want. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's just crazy. But that's what I like. I like crazy. I like weird. I like uh, quirky. So I did that. Uh, it was a train wreck, but a good train wreck. It was like a train wreck where everybody's cheering like, hey, hey. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's it's. Again, like previously to being the convention director, I was doing things like PRO and advertising, but my big thing for the day was the MC. I was the hype man. I just came into events like, all right, all right, all right. Woo! <laughs> uh, I up. And one of the people that was at my JoJo game show was like, oh, that was great. That was great. That was so much fun. I'd love to do something like that. So I sat her down. It's like, you like cons. I like cons. You know what? You're doing that sure con, a JoJo game show. I'm just like, what? I'm like, hey, do it, do it. You love JoJo. <laughs> like, you, you, you're at the game show. You participated as one of the contestants in the game show. You could do it. Why not? Um, and yeah, I, I just love encouraging that amongst people because, again, it's not that, like, once I kind of said to her, it's like, it's easy. It's just be weird and quirky. She's like, yeah, yeah, that sounds really fun. I'm going to do it. And she applied. She applied. And everybody can apply. Like, why not? It's a bit of fun. So, yeah, that's my experience doing panels. And unfortunately, last year, I was running around a lot. Uh, so I didn't get to see much panels. I did, however, do the Q&A with our special guest, Mr. Cronexia, where I made him wear bunny ears because... Yeah, of course. Weird. Quirky. Yeah, of course. As you do. It's like, oh, special guests that you bring over to see uh, attendees and be like a very important man. Ah, buddy ears, humiliate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I just got this like uh, the image of, by the way, if you can hear, I'm not sure if the three of you can hear what sounds like a velociraptor in the background. Uh, no, if, I, I, I can't hear anything. If so, Except if there's any background audio, that is voices. my little primrose decorating her first Christmas tree. So just if you hear something, is that, is that scary, her actual that's name? That's what it is. <laughs> Wait, is that her? Is that, that's her actual name, Primrose, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. No question. I know that I'm just spitballing here. Is that based off Prim from Hunger Games? No, actually, uh, it's based off. Um, Partly a Doctor Who personality quiz, and uh, partly, um, <laughs> okay, Rose, okay. and so partly far. good catch there, and partly because a friend of ours, Deirdre Sullivan, has written a book, a series of books of called, you know, Prim and Proper, uh, and all that kind of stuff, like you know, about a character named Primrose. So, with the oh. sheer amount of puns, 
I feel like it was a waste not to call her because, like, you know, she's the prim suspect. She follows the prim directive. She's prim possible. Look, she's prim perfect. If, if, if you're not going to name, if you're not going to name your kid after a pun of some sort, what, what's the point? I mean, there's, what there's, else are children for? You know, exactly. There's, there's a guy I I, I I work with, or not so much work with, but I I sometimes have to deal with with work. Whose whose first name is Joe and second name is King. <laughs> and those parents know how to have fun. <laughs> Joe and King. I don't like that. I oh need a sip of tea for that. That is excellent. But yeah, actually, because this kind of segues into JCon. Um, myself and Maeve were talking at JCon. We had little baby Primrose dressed as Deku from My Hero Academia. Oh, that was such a good photo. So we didn't cute. Get to, well, thank you very much. And we didn't get really get to hang out. But um, that segues into something else I kind of want to ask you about. Are you guys kind of big fans of like anime culture of Japanese? Is there anything you're really, really passionate about in that field? <coughs> Weeb. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, and I think, honestly, if you're in the convention scene, and again, I'm sure Maeve and Sinbar can dream to you about how much they're into anime, but yeah. I, do I speak for all of us, Maeve and Finn, when I say that we're big weeps? I Absolutely. certainly hope you are. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, yes. You, you, you don't get this. <laughs> you don't get this involved, put in this many hours into an event that you you know love so much if you if you don't have that background if you don't have that that joy for the source material oh bless and like so what would be like i mean i know it's a big big question but if you had a favorite two or three animes to mention off the top of your head what would they be uh, well my case um I'm a little bit terrible in that I seem to always lean toward like the mild harem anime. So my top two have been uh, Rosario Vampire and Oran High School Host Club, just for the harem and the reverse harem and watching to see oh how my goodness. I can get. <laughs> there are some wholesome uh, harem anime out there. This is I'd, true. I'd yes. say Oran High School Host Club falls into that. I think it's so. a pretty wholesome show. <laughs> Oh, no, Zach, you call that's a bit it, of a one. Can't really. Can I just, I'm really excited for the possibility that there's someone listening to this on the way home who has <laughs> no concept of what a harem anime is. Hearing well, they'll the soon find time. out. <laughs> <laughs> the Do you want to give hey, a quick bit of a dictionary definition Maeve. there, Maeve? Well, um, you know what? Well, I, I have been referred to as, um, as the walking dictionary sometimes, so I'll do my best. Uh, <laughs> basically, for those listening, a harem anime is an anime in which a singular protagonist type person has just multiple suitors. Um, so like, let's say we have a single man, and then there are six, usually it's six, women who all <laughs> want to date slash marry slash have his babies. There's usually exactly one gay man to accompany this man, and the same goes in reverse, <laughs> with the girl as the protagonist. <laughs> with one gay guy. It's like, uh, it's like, oh yeah, we're going to have all these suitors. Uh, um, uh, one gay guy. Yeah, 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 cool, cool. Sometimes they twist it a little more and they're like, ah, but you didn't realize How that this is gay man. Gay man. man. <laughs> because this gay man looks like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy oh traps oh god traps <laughs> trap uh, trap uh, trap culture is just interesting full stop <laughs> it reminds me of this time because I don't really like I'm like whatever you know whatever you want to watch that's cool I love anime I won't I, I will literally watch any anime on the years just because I, I like the art style so I'm like yeah cool I've got my big ones but um no speaking of traps I think <sighs> What all that comes to my head when you say that word is at Shurikon last year. Yukio, what? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you activated my trap card. <laughs> <laughs> I think of trap. When I think of trap anime characters, I think of you've activated my trap card, you. It's time to do 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 do. It is what I do, you. It is what I do. That's a pretty good impression. Mm -hmm. It's me, Joey Wheel. Oh, okay. No, do you know 
how I got this impression or how I learned to do this impression. It has there's an origin video. story. It does. There's this video by uh, an animator called Rice Pyre. He's he's like under that whole umbrella of uh, the sleepy cast and the sleepy cabin. Mm -hmm. And he does this video called The Heart of My Cards. And in it, it's just Joey Wheeler and Yuki Moto. And they have the most oversized, and I mean the most oversized hair possible. And they're having a duel. And Joey's there is like, this is it, yogs. The big cojona. The six feet under. The sleeping with the fishes. You talking to me? Forget about it. I got my mom's recipe for meatball. La la lasagna. <laughs> I play the red eyes black dragon in attack mode. I'm attacking life points directly. Yeah. Not so fast, Joey. You've activated my trap card. I'm G6. <laughs> I, just, I just, anytime I'm talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, that just happens. And it's, it's getting a bit frustrating. But, you know, I, I learned to do Joey Wheeler by watching that video on Luke no Nine Yu's. I'm completely with you there. I watched a lot of Little Karibo uh, Yu-Gi-Oh growing up. Can I just ask something? I'm guessing you're into the Yu-Gi-Oh anime and the games and that kind of stuff, right? I... Okay, yes and no. I'm nostalgia purposes. I've got a Red Eyes Black Dragon deck just for nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I will sometimes watch Yu Gi Oh! on Netflix just for nostalgia, and mm -hmm. I will play the app just for nostalgia. But, like, yeah, no, sorry, yeah, go ahead. What's your question? Well, my question was we had, I'm not sure if you called her panel, but we had a Pokemon expert straight out of Kanto on a few weeks ago who was also at JCon yes. running her Pokemon Nightmare. That panel. was, uh, yes, Lisa. Uh, that was Lisa, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we got into this discussion on this show about how the Pokemon community, when it comes to being competitive, is a lot more wholesome than the Yu-Gi-Oh community, where they're like out for blood when they play against each other. Do you know? Do you think yeah, that's like, something you've kind of come across in sort of fields? Like, obviously, it's a broad analysis, but would you kind of be on the same vibe as opposed to Pokemon as opposed to Yu-Gi-Oh there? Yeah, I've I've heard that myself. Uh, I, I, well, less less Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh. I play a bit of Magic the Gathering. Uh, oh my yeah, spare time. I was just but, gonna say you're saying that like Pokemon is more wholesome to Yu Gi Oh. That's a fair point. Yu Gi Oh. is a lot more wholesome than Magic. You know. Fair and fair. I've enough. never played but, Magic. How um, bad does it get? Is there blood on the walls? Uh, dep de depends how, how how you approach the game. I've I've always been just. I play it for fun. Don't get too competitive with it. It's it's, it's just a nice outlet to, to to chill out with some friends. But definitely, I, I've heard stories. Um, a friend a friend of mine has got into the or tried to get into the Pokemon card game, and there is a card in the Pokemon card game called Professor Oak, and oh. it's even even at the top level tournaments. If you, uh, I, 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 from my, my understanding is that if you play the Professor Oak card, you draw five new cards. Uh, e even from local game store up to the top level championships, if you play that card with no cards in your hand, so you get maximum effect out of it, mm -hmm. your opponent will high five you. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> that's just beautiful. Like, it's like, yes. Oh, you played Professor Oak? <laughs> exactly. It's, it, it sounds like a wonderful community. All right, all right, all right, Professor Oak. Hey, hey, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's official. Nerd to know is the new convention director of Shurikon. We are <laughs> we are just nicking your your catchphrases wholesale. You, this will be a completely different show in three weeks' time. <laughs> It'll be the Shurikon show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and can I ask, actually, because we've actually we've had a few anime fans on the show now. Kind of, what was your like, kind of gateway anime? Like, do you have? Would you grow up with Pokemon? I'm assuming, or like, what was it when you were younger? So for me, like, I think everybody, without even knowing, watched anime when they were younger. It was like what Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Beyblades, Digimon, mm -hmm. just those typical ones. And I think that's just what we kind of grew up with, which is. Yeah, cool. Uh, but for me, yeah, my gateway anime, at the age of 12, I started watching One Piece. Um, ah. And that was like, blew my mind. And the reason I started watching One Piece is because, um, yeah, well, I'm half Taiwanese, uh, yeah, by origin, and I visited Taiwan a few times. I saw this logo for One Piece, but like, if, if any of you guys know the One Piece kind of logo, it's like the, the Jolly Roger and then Luffy as the eye. So if you're reading it by words, it's kind of nepek. And I'm like, oh, what's nepek? I like that. 
It looks cool. I, I like the animation people on Nepec. So I started looking up Nepec. And believe it or not, if you look up Nepec, or I think, as far as I remember, you will get linked to one piece being like, yeah, people are yeah. people are kind of stupid. Uh, and they don't realize that it's, it's an O and an I, and it's supposed to say one piece, not Nepec. We reached the point where yes. the author actually wrote that exact sentence in one of their he did, in one of his interviews, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, you're wrong, but like, it's okay, because you guys like my thing so much. <laughs> it's like the, it's it's an O, not a it's an O and I. It's not Nemec, but um, yeah, that that was my gateway anime. I don't know about Finn and Maeve. I'm sure they've. I'm sure Maeve had some rando harem anime, and Finn was. I could not actually tell you what did you watch. What was your gateway anime? I'm curious. <laughs> I'm actually really curious what your first yeah. like kind of anime was. Um, obviously, as a kid, grew up with Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh, Digimon. The Holy Trinity, the yes. First, we like, all, that's it. The first actual, should we say, actual anime that I was introduced to would have been Code Geass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that was yeah. the one that watched that on a friend's, uh, on a friend's uh, recommendation and haven't looked back since. Oh, and, and uh, I'm noticing that Beyblades is being tragically overlooked. Oh, of course, Beyblades. You couldn't forget probably the second best of the uh, anime openings. After yeah, Pokemon. actually, you can't what take that from it. it. I'm a big card captors advocate. It's got fights and costumes. It's basically your baby's first uh, cosplay convention thing if you've watched it. <laughs> I kind of feel one? half tempted for all of us to sing the Beyblades thing together, but I know that's going to go down terribly because I don't even know the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like, like, Beyblades, Beyblades, good theme song. I'm like, yeah, I want to sing it. I want to sing it now. I want to sing my heart out. Well, it's like, have you ever seen, there's a comedian on YouTube called ProZD, and he's like, uh, yeah, he's got a little skit about singing year, anime songs, but only singing the English bits. And he's just got this resting <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, like and again, he just goes, oh, yeah. And he's like, I know, just back to resting face. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to like, like uh, after the show I'm definitely gonna have to send it to you guys uh, but yes. Maeve I never caught yours what was your kind of gateway thing then um, surprisingly it was not harem anime it was Yu-Gi-Oh Stop. obsessively for years with my sister recording nice. it on the what table what was that what was that Maeve what did you say <laughs> it was what anime <laughs> Oh, I wish I it wish I could do Yu-Gi-Oh know. voices. I could do. I wish I could just go like, "What's Kaiba say?" He's like, "Dweeb." <laughs> uh, no, Kaiba's like, well, wait, wait, let me, let me, let me try to put on my Kaiba voice. <laughs> Joey Wheeler. No, that's not it. Joey Wheeler. <laughs> it needs You're more contempt. Useless. Your card is just a sick copy of mine. I'm about to play the Blue Eyes White Dragon, the I ultimate don't. card. Pretty good. I'm trying I to think, think of like what he is. says in the app. It's like, you're a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate dick. <laughs> <laughs> Kaiba is just, he's just a bit condescending and a bit of a dick. <laughs> yeah. But it's, that's, that's it's funny character. thinking of Kaiba <laughs> in retrospect, because like, as a kid, you're like, oh yeah, he's a bit moody, whatever. But like, coming back to it as an adult, he's like, you're like a 25-year-old billionaire scoffing at children while playing a children's game. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. It's like wrong. beating kids at football. It's like they, they, they're not as physically able for it as you are, and you're just beating them. It's like, you're a loser, you're a loser, you're a loser. I'm yeah, winner. like imagine That's if I ran up to like a bunch of like nine or ten-year-olds playing Pokemon Go and like beat them in a fight, and I was like, what? What was that? <laughs> yeah, it's just like... You're terrible. You have no future. Not <laughs> Yeah. But congratulations. You just you just beat them at a card game that they don't quite fully understand that you're also a massive shareholder in. Uh, <laughs> I don't I see the I don't see the achievement here. <laughs> Until like you know a little ten year old comes up and and he beats you and you're like what the hell? <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, I was pitching uh, the first series of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, to Lisa on the show a few weeks ago, and I told her about, I'm not sure if you remember the character Bandit Keith. Yes. Who oh, has, he's American who has a midlife crisis because a kid <laughs> beats him in a tournament. 
Yep. That seems to just yep. be the general consensus of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like loses to kid, mm-hmm. has midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> may or may not move on. <laughs> Always never moves on. <laughs> Always never moves on. <laughs> okay, Walk guys. To it. So just stepping away from anime for just a second. Uh, you guys are obviously like you're running a convention. You're like you attend conventions, all that kind of stuff. Here's a big, broad question you can answer any way you like. What do you think is the appeal of like conventions like Shurikan? Why do you think people love them so much? Oh, it's the community. It's the it's the yeah. the attendees that keep coming back year after year to meet up with their, their friends that they wouldn't see otherwise that, you know, all the, the, the convention friends that, that, you know, from, from across the country that all gather once a, once a, once a year uh, for these sorts of events. So you're saying the real convention was the friends you made along the way? Always. Oh, no, you did not just say that. You did not just say that. <laughs> oh. I mean, he's very right. He is like, right, but I, 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 that doesn't mean I wanted to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll put that to the whole panel. Uh, Finbar, uh, why do you think people keep coming back to it? As I said, I, 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 I strongly believe it's, it's, it's the community that, that builds up around, around conventions that, that keeps people back in the atmosphere. Oh, I see. I should say, I, yourself and Mark are sharing a tab. So I thought it was Mark that asked. Uh, I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Wait, I'm sharing a tab? Drink some Finbar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but a bit behind the scenes. Before the recording, Mark was regaling us with stories about his wine bar adventures. Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> look, uh, yes, I was, yeah, before the recording, because we were like testing sand and whatnot. Uh, it's like, oh, yes, what you get up to? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I went to a wine bar tonight. It's my job. My job started doing a wine bar recently. I'm like, oh, discount, 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 discount. So yes, I went. I mean, bought very expensive wine, a very expensive cheese, very expensive champagne at a reduced rate. So yeah, discount, and it still broke my wallet. And I am poor now. <laughs> Jesus, and Finbar's feeling insecure about having Barrier Lions tea, and you've got all that. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's look. I, I'm look. I'm a culinary student. I love food, wine. So it's like <laughs> some people will go out and spend like I don't know sixty euro on a new game. I'll go out and spend that on like an evening for wine, cheese, food, whatever cocktails, even because I just I love like taking notes. And this is like going away from the nerd stuff. This is like taking notes about food, taking notes about flavor. That's just my thing, you know. Not at all. It's all relative. Like in fact. Um... Because uh, I'm sure a lot of people are shopping for like a wine for their parents, for their cousins, for whatever. Would you recommend a really good wine off the top of your head? I could recommend a few. Yeah, yeah. Um, one, if you're going for a red, I would recommend a. It's called Lazara. It's 100% ooh, Grenache. It's 100% Grenache. Fantastic wine for Christmas. Really good with uh, red meats. Uh, very nice. Another one is uh, Mosel Riesling. That's a white wine. Oh, uh, Riesling. Yeah, really good. A lovely aroma. Um, very nice with like white meaty fishes or white light fishes for that matter. Poultry. It's it's good stuff. Just good all around. Riesling and Grenache. Good grapes. Look for them in your stores. They are people pleasers. Happy <laughs> Christmas. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> just like you have to sign the card from you like all the people across Blanchard's Town who bought the wine have to like credit you yeah yeah that's it you know I'll, I'll, funny enough I'm working for a wine company I'm getting endorsements from every bottle of wine that I'm selling tonight so you can really <laughs> really help me out here <laughs> oh my god our podcast is being sponsored by wine and Red Bull Ooh, this is great sponsored <laughs> by wine what a combination no, no a good story ever started with milk. <laughs> and Maeve, I think a bit of behind the scenes here. In the same vein, can you recommend a really good donut? Really good donut. <laughs> <laughs> what so my donut specifically, <laughs> specifically what brand of donut? Really good donut. <laughs> specifically, an offbeat donut, where, oh. which is where I live. Um, they're real good. Uh, 
I think uh, the one that I like making the most is the uh, chocolate orange because it looks like just a regular like chocolate coated ring donut with a chocolate orange slice on it. But in fact, it has hidden curd inside, even though it doesn't have <laughs> the center where you would put the curd inside. Okay, so I've got to say, you... that sounds more complex than the wine he recommended. <laughs> Look, you're probably not legally allowed to answer, and I'm not expecting to. This is more of a statement on my end. The orange, the chocolate orange that they use for that donut is definitely Terry's chocolate orange. I, I, it definitely is. There's no way that they've just made their off-brand, off-beat Terry's, not Terry's chocolate, chocolate orange. Yes, you're correct. It is the Terry's <laughs> yes, chocolate orange. Yes, I knew it. It's the Terry's chocolate orange. <laughs> Peek behind the curtain. <laughs> Although the temptation to like get an orange mold and like individually make the Terry's chocolate orange slices for my own personal benefit just You couldn't just like fib it a bit, like just say it's Timmy's tangerine or something like that now. Timmy's brown chocolate. <laughs> 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 Okay, I, I know I let us down this rabbit hole, but I have a few more questions about the convention itself. Uh, I'm guessing you guys are the panelists on the costume competition, are you? Panelists? No. Or the so, judges, I should say. No, actually, we will leave that up to our cosplay guests this year. So, we have a few more to announce, and that will be coming in the next few weeks. But, for example, Willow Creative would be one of our judges at the panel. Or the, not the panel, sorry, the uh, cosplay competition. Okay, but I'm sure you've, you've kind of been around this a few times. Uh, I say this as someone who has entered cosplay competitions with varying degrees of success, uh, with a big asterisk over varying. But um, what advice would you give for someone who's maybe doing their first cosplay or entering their first competition? Do you have any tips or advice on, to someone who might be listening? My advice would be to have fun, honestly. Um, not even to sound bad, but like, if you're just going to flaunt your stuff or like to show off your costume, you probably won't win. And that's cool because the crowd's going to love it. The judges are going to love it. Everybody's going to love it. The people that win put countless, I mean, countless hours into cosplay. It, it, it seems like it's a full-time job for them, you know? Mm. Well, but sometimes like, I, it I, is. Uh, well, no, it is. Some people, I like, I think, you know, like, like, there's a lot of, like, uh, cosplay guests out there that literally will charge to appear at conventions because that's just their full-time job, you know? Um, but, like, for me, my first cosplay competition, my friend and I dressed up as Team Rocket Grunts. Not even just in nice. Team Rocket Grunts. Yeah, it was cool. So we just went in black uniform with the white boots, white belt, uh, Pokeballs, and we just got up on stage... And like with our body, I don't know if you can imagine this, but like imagine like your your right foot is straight, your left foot is out, and then your two arms come around in a circle over your head, your body spells an aura. That's what we did on stage. And we knew we were never gonna win the cosplay competition, but like people were like losing their mind because it's like, ah Team Rocket, I love them. And we were like, Oh, we're on stage and people are applauding. This is amazing. <laughs> and that was the fun of it. That's all that I wanted out of it. And honestly, yes, for anybody who's entering a cosplay competition, my main recommendation would be have fun. You know, if you win, woohoo! Mm. If you don't, you got up on stage and people started losing their minds and it's random applause, you know, and that's that's enough, you know. I, I could agree with you completely, Mark, because the enthusiasm does catch. Like, in the past, uh, my uh, my fiance, my Stevie, she was eight months pregnant, and she painted the bump as the Death Star. And, like, <laughs> yeah, that's that was amazing. Or, like, at J-Con, just uh, the one we were all at together, dressed as the My Hero Academia characters, the little primrose was swarmed by Dekus and, you know, the froppies and all these different characters like and it's it's almost multiplies if you know what i mean that enthusiasm it's very earnest i've never had anyone say a bad comment while in that environment would you agree yeah absolutely it's again if people if random people were to judge the competition they would 
they wouldn't pick the best costume. They'd pick the costume that they like the most, which is what they like the anime that they love or the game that they love. And it just rebounds. Like people see what they love and they just click with it. And I, that's what I love. It goes back to what Finbar was saying about that sense of community. People go because they can relate to people and they can have fun with people that love the same things that they do, which is not something that you get to see every day in a lot of settings, you know? Like even at, at, at JCon, for example, I was dressed as Joseph Joester from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And I got to go to a JoJo Bizarre meetup on one of the floors. And they decided to do a photo shoot and then they wanted to do the cha-cha slide. And they tried to play it. They didn't have any speakers. I'm like, you know what? Screw that. Got the lyrics on my phone. Started singing the cha-cha slide while they're all dancing. And it was just... It's so simple, but it was so much fun, and oh, I loved it so much. And I, I think everybody can relate to that. I think everyone can relate to that. Well, that's that's fantastic, and I think you're right. There is the spirit of everyone kind of lifting together. The only odd comment I got when we were the My Hero Academia family is we got lost on the way to Croke Park, and we ended up in this like uh, domestic estate <laughs> nearby. And like, um, and we were kind of wandering around looking helpless dressed as superheroes and some randomer said, Oi, Batman, it's that way. <laughs> <laughs> and that's literally the worst we've ever gotten. Uh, I mean, even so, that comment is pretty innocent. Yeah, it exactly. Is. That's what, But that's what I'm saying. Like, I've never, like, cause especially once I went as the Jodie Whittaker doctor, which is obviously like kind of a, like a kind of gender reverse dress and I was a bit worried about that or maybe someone making an odd comment and no everyone was incredibly excited and a few people were fooled which was very gratifying <laughs> that you're a guy that can do both yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay uh, I want to cover kind of some nerd news before we wrap up our episode but is there anything else you would like to say about Shurikon before we start to kind of hit the final few minutes of the episode? Yes. Um, Absolutely. I think, the, I think the, the, the big thing that we just haven't got around to yet this evening um, is our charity live stream, or our, our, our fundraising live stream next, next weekend, the 21st and 22nd of December. Um, Lovely. And uh, how can people get involved with that then? So you'll be able to join us between starting at 12 p.m. on Saturday the 21st and running all the way through till 12 p.m. on Sunday um, at twitch.tv forward slash Shurikon Ireland. You, you can find the links, direct links on our website and on our Facebook. But um, we're all looking forward to that one. We'll be online all day playing video games and raising raising funds for, for Shurikon and for our charity partner this year, Jigsaw. Which we're very excited to uh, fundraise for this year. Okay, that's fantastic. And if, say, people are brave enough to want to volunteer for Finbar or maybe send off applications or anything like that, where is the best place to do that then as well? Best place for applications would be uh, the shurikon.com website and um, there's a get involved button at the top of the at the top of the site uh, there with all the links okay and uh fast obviously not the last question but in regards to shurikon what date is the convention itself it uh, is february I'm going 15. to say this wrong. <laughs> yes, that was it. I was like, I, I'm very bad with dates. I'm very bad with dates. Um, yes, that is Sunday, 15th and 16th. Yes. So the second weekend, that is totally the second weekend. Yeah, I can yes. do that. <laughs> <laughs> That is fantastic. Cool. Before we wrap up, I've got to plug that the new Star Wars movie is coming out next week. And I don't know if you guys have checked out other Wait, episodes. That's next week? That's next. It's that's oh, for yeah. the week. Oh, it's this God. coming Thursday. Oh my! You're you're joking. You're joking me. Yeah. Right? At the time this airs, it will be what five days? I think. Five days. Ooh. Okay. Very excited. Wait. I've got too many assignments next week, and I. Ah, that's annoying. Me. <laughs> that's annoying me. That's okay. That's what midnight premieres are for. Yeah, but then I've got I've got an assignment due on the Friday, so it's like, oh, I'm gonna miss it. Spoilers. 
<laughs> well, I want to pitch something to you guys because uh, Dara, our regular host, he uh, is a massive Star Wars fan, which means that he loves mm -hmm. it and hates it in equal measures. And I will admit <laughs> half of our episodes do tend to spiral off into ways to fix Star Wars Disney. I, I have a feeling the panel we're pitching to you guys will be a Star Wars post-mortem, touch wood. Um, but... Oh, goodness. <laughs> so very strong feelings so I will plug that one way or another I'm not sure if our next episode is this coming Saturday or the one after but it will be heavily Star Wars themed so before we wrap do you guys are you guys heavy Star Wars fans did you grow up with this or I'm a oh. big Star Wars nerd uh, even my boss is a big Star Wars nerd and um, sometimes we just kind of talk about Star Wars instead of doing work which is great but uh, yes, I am massive. Uh, not okay. Not massive that I know every detail. Just massive in terms of I see the movie on TV. I'm like, oh, Star Wars. I'm sitting down watching this. You know, yeah. I just love it. I love it. The only one I can't make it through on TV is Attack of the Clones. I don't blame uh, you. Nobody blames you. Um, <laughs> in fairness, though, it was, it's, it's the last. The last bit of Attack on the Clones is pretty awesome. Oh, the arena bit's great, Crack. It's the just, arena bit's uh, great. That's awesome. It's, I was having this debate with my girlfriend a few weeks ago. What do you think is worse, the Mary Jane and Peter Parker scenes in the original Spider-Man films or the Anakin and Padme scenes in Attack of the Clones? Oh, anime. Uh, Anakin and, and, and Anime. Padme. anime. <laughs> like, what's worse, Star Wars or Spider-Man? Anime. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Freudian slip right there. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. But uh, I, f I feel like it's gotta be gotta be Anakin and Padme. Like, Wait, well, like, what scenes from Spider Man are we talking though? I, I need a bit of reference because like there's there's a few. It's like, wait, I need to know your name. It's just your friendly neighborhood Spider Man. That that's Ooh. fine. I'm thinking more the long scenes where they talk about her being an angel, or maybe if you're like. In the village. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> like that kind of awkward uh, kind of... I, well, I call them kind of like the I standing think, by the uh, gate conversations. <laughs> What's his name again? Christian... Hay Hayden? Christian Hayden? Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hayden Christensen, not Christensen Hayden. Uh, <laughs> yes, I... He's a good actor. He's good. I like... He plays the role of Anakin quite well. It's just his lines are not so good. Look, if the lines sound bad coming out of Christopher Lee, they're bad lines. That's it's it. Just, they're bad lines. They are. They're bad lines. It's like almost oh, as bad I as just, sand. Yeah, that's it. Though. It's like, oh yeah, I just, I just committed genocide in a whole race of people. First thing he says is, "I hate sand." It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe that's oh, foreshadowing, though, because he says everywhere. he needs sand, and then he gets into a fight with sand people later on. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's a Wookiee. Oh, we're next, uh, next leveling uh, Star Wars. full of impressions. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, again, MC. You know, that's just my thing. Yeah. So, I want to pitch something to you guys for next week, possibly to get involved with on a future episode. Myself and my Stevie are drafting up a Star Wars bingo card. Where we're going to put on things we think will happen in the movie. Do you guys want to get involved with this? Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah? Okay, straight up straight up suggestion, Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. You think Baby Yoda? Well, I mean, I'll send you over a grid. We'll put it up online. You fill in, like, your 20, 25 random things you think might... It might be something as big as Kylo Ren lives, Kylo Ren dies, or it could be as small as there's randomly one Gungan, or <laughs> reference to Rogue One. <laughs> So, and if you get a bingo, you win. Okay. Yes. Just every awesome. slot for me, every slot will just be Baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> that way I either your win or your, just lose. Your bingo. Yeah. bingo card Are you going to write it extreme. in like different colored pens? So it's like makes it all adds together to make a Baby Yoda face. <laughs> Yoda, baby. No, that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Oh. It sounds like I was trying to flirt with Yoda, like mm, Yoda, baby, <laughs> Yoda, baby. <laughs> it's like it's 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 coming up, it's like instead of like Santa, baby, it's like Yoda, baby. It's just one little thing that I need. 
The force. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Everything say every Christmas song sounds wrong if you like go with Yoda voice because then it becomes like bells jingle bells jingle. So uh, I, I I unfortunately haven't started the Mandalorian yet. I mean obviously <laughs> we haven't started the Mandalorian yet because it's not available here and we only use legal sources. Um, yeah, of course, of course. Apps, I, I haven't watched the does, single does, episode does, because does that would be Yoda involved. actually speak. During the, or is he actually not yet. Baby Yoda because he doesn't speak? No, well, no he's, he's like not a furby. Baby Yoda. He just looks. He's more like you ever see the Mogwai in Gremlins? Yes. yes. He's just got a lot of meaningful looks. That's kind of the vibe they're going for. Yeah. It's a real puppet. Okay, so it'll, it'll be interesting like, to see whether you know when when he first speaks. What what do we consider Baby Yoda's first word? Is it the first thing he says, or is it the first word of the sentence? First word. I, I'm gonna say it's <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh no, no, he stole it again. <laughs> no, I, I saw this stupid one. It's like Baby Yoda's first words are his second words. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that wrecks my head thinking about that. It's, it's, it's like you know, the first words he says are actually supposed to be the second words. So, it, like for example, if he was supposed to say "mama" and then "dada," he would go mm, "dada, mama." You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got to figure out a Yoda alphabet before next week. I am, I am totally on board for you rewriting Yoda-themed Christmas songs. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I think we could we could sing them at the like closing the podcast. I'll just I'll sing a Christmas song. I'll get the lyrics up and sing it in a Yoda voice. I don't want well, to do we'll that. we'll edit that into the last episode of the year. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. You've got a week. All right, guys, we're gonna call time on that. Is there anything you want to plug before we wrap? Um. I think I I'd just think like so. to oh, wait, say, I'd like to just like reiterate how important it is about fundraising for Jigsaw as our chosen charity this year. Um, like that is a major focus for Shurikon outside of being a fun, nerdy anime convention is just like raising money and doing some good because it's a nonprofit event that we run every year. And it's um, a charity that we chose because it's close to our hearts, helping with like the mental health of people, teens, uh, students, people our age. Um, just wanted to get that in and say like come and if you can donate some money to the live stream uh come to Shurikon, uh just try to help out a good charity excellent and yeah. may i just before we go into the end i'd just like to thank all three of you in advance for all the hard work that you do because i've heard brilliant things about Shurikon in the past i'm really into this one oh, thank you very much Excellent. This one will be a fantastic one. It's actually, I don't know if we said this at all. It's new venue. It's being held in Angel Street this year. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah that's definitely well Dublin, worth knowing. Yeah. So like super, super central. Uh, even bigger space and everything. So it's going to be fun. Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Well then, Finbar, is there anything you want to plug before we wrap the episode? No. I, I Obviously, Shurikon, um as we said before, if you're interested in, in taking part in any way, shape, or form, you can find all the information on the website under the uh, Get Involved section. You guys can't see, but I'm dabbing to what he's saying. I heard something. I wasn't sure what it was. <laughs> it kind like of dabbing. sounded like a fart, but wasn't dabbing. <laughs> Well, as you're dabbing, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, the event, a wine, a donut before we wrap? Oh, sorry. Um, no, <laughs> I just, I, yeah, no, I, I suppose thank you guys for having us, listening to our senseless, senseless rambling. And I hope that you're as excited as we are for sure on this year. Like, like Maeve said, we're going to be sponsoring a fantastic charity that is doing great work with the youth of Ireland. And let's face it, there's a lot of young people in cons and there's a lot of cons and young people. I don't know where I was really going with that. <laughs> I was actually, until that sentence, I was going to say, this is actually the most kind of coherent episode we've ever done. So, I mean, <laughs> A, go check out wow. our episodes and B, thank you very like, much for coming on to the show. 
not at all. <laughs> Listening Pleasure. back, I'm like, no, we were we were stupid. You're like, no, this was really coherent. I'm like, oh <laughs> my goodness, good <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god usually yes, no, by this point so much, we Ryan. are discussing alternate endings to Star Wars where Luke comes out of the shower and it was all a dream and that kind of thing <laughs> oh you just upset me you've just upset me <laughs> congratulations that's, I'm officially upset that's the wow 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 all right, so uh, we're going to call time there before my software crashes. There's a bit of behind-the-scenes info. So I have been Keanu Calicorn, as always, and uh, say goodbye, everyone, on the panel one last time. All right, all right, all right. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you very goodbye. much, and we will be back with our Star Wars review. Thanks to our Shurikon guests, and you will find us in the same spot as always. This has been Nerd2No Media. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>